Hello, good morning, guys. So, in the last class, what did we discuss? Tell me. We discuss about the network. Okay, we discuss about network topology. So, what is network topology? The graphical representation of your network. Okay. Then after that, what did we discuss? Mode of communication. There we saw about unicast, multicast, broadcast and any cast okay unicast is one to one communication multicast is one to many communication then broadcast is one to all communication and any cast is again one to one communication but in case of any cast more than one node will be sharing the same address okay and the message will be delivered to the nearest node. okay after this we discuss about collision domain and broadcast domain collision domain broadcast domain and after that we discuss about half duplex and full duplex yes. we also saw about simplex okay then after that what did we discuss cable. types of cable. cables so where do we use the straight through cable for different different devices, different devices. or different devices like if you want to connect a router with a switch yes. or a switch with a no. PC. pc then we are going to use straight through cable and in case of same devices we are going to use crossover cable. Cross <laughs> okay so this is the uh these are the topics we discussed in the last class so anyone having any doubt in that part no okay. yes because right now mainly only two topologies are being used okay so that's why we discussed them only otherwise there are like ring topology bus topology many more topologies okay okay uh what are your names Yasin. Okay. So this is your first session. Today is your first session. No, in my class, this is your first session. Okay. All right. So today we'll be discussing about IP address. Now, yesterday we saw some introductory part about the IP address also when we were discussing about network components like hub, switch, router. So there we saw about the addresses. Okay. So the addresses were of two types. One is the logical address and second is the physical address. These are the two types of address. Again, your logical address, it is not fixed. It can be changed. Okay. And example was your IP address. In case of physical, it is fixed. And example was your MAC address. And we took an example of a university where we can be identified with the name and enrollment number okay so when we go from one university to another university our name is going to remain same it means your your name is acting as a physical address that is fixed with you anywhere you go your name is going to remain the same but the enrollment number that is the logical entity if you go to one university it will be different if you go to other university it is going to be different okay so your enrollment number it is acting as a logical address clear okay now we'll be seeing some introduction about your IPv4 and IPv6 as well as MAC address. Then we'll be discussing about IPv4 because first of all, we are going to learn IPv4 in detail and this IPv4 studying IPv4 in detail is going to make IPv6 very easy. Okay. All right. So see now. So we were discussing about address. So address is of two types, logical and second physical. In logical, it is the IP address example. Physical is the MAC address. Okay. Now, if we discuss about your IP address, so each and every address should have some properties. What kind of properties? First of all, your address, it should be unique. Okay. It should not repeat. Yes or no? It should not repeat. What will happen if an address repeats? Let's say you live in a colony. Okay. And in your colony, what is whatever is your name, uh, whatever nameplate is there on your home, same nameplate is there on each and every home. What will happen when a courier yeah. arrives? What will happen? Collision. Arrive in a wrong place. Yeah, there is a possibility, right? That the message could be delivered to someone else mm -hmm. because the delivery guy is not going to check the entire colony. The first address he sees is going to deliver it there. Correct. So with the same reason that more than one machines in a network should not have the same address. Okay. Because what will happen? The message could be delivered to the wrong guy. So your address should be unique. Okay. So there is one property we came to know 
that your address should be unique. Then what kind of address is IP address? It is a logical address. Okay. So if you want to define your IP address, you can define it like, and why address is used to identify an address is used to identify. So you can define IP address is a unique logical address that is used to identify a networking device or a node in a network. This is how you can define your IP address. So in this one definition, we covered the points. It is unique. It should be unique. It should not repeat. And this is a logical type of addresses means it is not fixed with the device. It can be changed. Okay. Then your IP address, it has two versions. Okay. First is the IPv4 and second is the IPv6. These are the two words. So what is the differences between the two versions? First of all, the IPv4 was designed to address the network, okay, to provide addresses to the entire internet. But the IPv4 is not sufficient, okay. IPv4 was designed long back. And at that time, the developers, they thought that, okay, IPv4 has around somewhere around 4 billion addresses. And that time, internet was not being used this much as of today. So they thought, okay, the 4 billion is more than sufficient. But soon they came to know that it will not be sufficient anymore. And they started working on IPv6 since 1990 already. In the 1990 already, they started working on IPv6 and they designed this new protocol. Okay. So see here, I'll show you some differences. And before the differences, I'll show you something from the book that why do we have the IPv6? Okay, there's no power. Okay, so this is not visible to you. you guys, we'll take some break because there's no power. Hmm? No generator. The generator is there, but the backup or the servers are running. Uh, everybody can join in the devices, phone or laptop. Uh, the offline people are not having the laptops here. Mobile phone, they can do this. Yeah, guys, you can join with your mobile phones for a while. So, but we don't have the group also. So sharing the link is a big deal. Okay, let me do one thing. Okay, it's back. So now see. Visible? Okay, now see this note. Okay, the universe has run out of public IPv4 addresses. Okay, there are no IP public IPv4 addresses available. Right. In a couple of significant ways, INA, this is the authority that assigns the IP addresses. Okay, which assigns the public IP address blocks to five regional internet registries. So what actually happens at the top, it is the INA that is holding up all the IP addresses. Now this INA is providing these addresses to regional internet authorities. Okay, there are total five regional internet authorities in the world. Okay, then these regional internet authorities, these assign the addresses to the ISPs, your ISPs. First of all, they are the regional internet authorities. Like in Asia, there is one like that so they are assigned to the isp and we customers we buy from the isps when we take the connection we are actually buying a public ip to use the internet okay so they have been already exhausted ip address so the internet community worked hard during the 1990s to solve this problem coming up with several solutions and the one of the solutions was a newer version of ip and that was ipv6 okay so if you see here see here by 2015, the RIR or of Regional Internet Authority of North America exhausted its supply of IP4 addresses. Because if you see in the world, is there is it possible there that there are only 4 billion devices using internet? No, right? There are many more. So for that purpose, IP4 has almost exhausted. And it is still in use because of these features. Because we have the IPv6, we have something called as CIDR and also the NAT. And this NAT is the popular thing because of which right now we are using the internet with the help of IPv4. Okay. And we'll be discussing the, this in our course. So we'll see some differences that what is the difference between the IPv4 and IPv6. One side is IPv4, second is IPv6. Okay. So first of all, 
IPv4 address, it is a 32 bit address. Okay. And when I'm talking about bit, I'm talking about binary. Okay. Everybody knows about binary. Binary is a number system that is having only two digits. One is the zero and second is the one. Okay. So means if you write an IPv4 address in binary, it is going to have 32 bits. Okay. While your IPv6, it is going to have 128 bits. Your IPv6 is going to have 128 bits. If I give you a small example of an IPv4 address, so see, it is like 192.168.0.100. This is an example of IPv4 address. And if you take example of IPv6 address, you can say 2001 column. This is an example of your IPv6 address, okay? Because IPv6 address, it is longer or larger in size than the IPv4 address. Now coming back to the differences. So if I look at these differences, so see here, my IPv4 address is having four separate, you can say parts, okay? It has been divided with the help of dot, right? So there are four separate entities. So means it is written in the form x dot, x dot, x dot, x. Okay. And how many bits are there total? 32. So if I divide these 32 bits in four parts, means each part is going to have how much value? Eight means each and every part or each and every x is going to have eight bits. And the group of eight, we call it as an octet because octa means eight. Okay. Similarly, if we come to the IPv6, how many parts are there? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, and eight. Total eight parts. And how many bits? 120. Means each and every part having how much value? 16. Means if I write it x colon, x colon, x colon, x like this. So each and every value of x, it is 16 bits. Okay. Then your IPv4, this octet, it is being separated by dot. But in case of your IPv6, the group of 16, it is known as hextet. Okay. So these hextets are separated by colon. Okay. These differences we are able to see with the, by looking at the addresses. One more difference. If you check your IPv4, there are only numbers, only numbers from ranging from zero to nine. Okay. Means it is using the decimal number system. But in case of your IPv6, you see there is numbers also and letters also because it is using hexadecimal. Okay. So if you write the differences, we are going to write them like you are going to say in IPv4, there are four octets. Okay. And in IPv6, there are eight hexadecimal. Then in case of IPv4, your one octet is eight bits. In case of IPv6, your one hexadecimal is 16 bits okay then your ipv4 in your ipv4 dot is used to separate the octets okay so you can say dot means this one is used to separate octets for octet separation dots are used in case of ipv6 colon is used okay In case of your IPv6, uh, IPv4, decimal number system is used. Okay. And if you talk about your decimal number system, there are the digits 0 to 9, total 10 digits. Okay. 0 till 9. But in case of your IPv6, hexadecimal number system is used. Ranging from 0 to 9 and A to F. Okay ranging from 0 to 9 and A to F. So total 15, 0 to 15 total will be 16. Okay. Because 0 to 9, these are 10 and A to F, these are 6. So total 16. So the differences are clear. These are some common differences between your IPv4 and IPv6. Clear? Okay. Now, if I give you some characteristics or some features of your MAC address, so MAC address also you can write. First of all, 
your MAC address, it is a 48 bit address. Means if you write your MAC address in binary, there will be 48 bits. Okay. And your MAC address, it is written in some particular formats. And before that, let me tell you that it uses hexadecimal number system. Okay. Now, in case of your MAC address, okay, there is not a fixed separation. Okay. Depending on the operating system, the separation changes. Like if I show you in Windows. Okay. If I say get MAC. So you see how the MAC address is being used. This is how your MAC address is written. Okay. Let me just copy it from here. This is one format. Second will be instead of this, you will see colon. Instead of hyphen, you'll see colon. And the third format, these will be divided in the groups of four and separated with a dot. This is how the MAC addresses are written. So there is a not a fixed separation. But again, what is fixed? It will be a 48 bit address. Okay. And it is a physical address. MAC address is a physical address. 48 bit address and it uses hexadecimal number system. Okay. Hexadecimal number system means again 0 to 9 and A to F. Is it clear? Online people having any doubt in this part? So this is not yet exhausted. MAC address? No. Means between 48 address, they are managed to arrange all kind of devices. MAC address in your in your MAC address, what happens? That half of the MAC address is provided by the uh INA. Okay. And the half part that is decided by the manufacturer, this happened. While in case of your IP address, what happens? They provide the IP range, means a network range. And in one network, there are multiple IP addresses. So IP4 gets exhausted soon. Okay. Is it clear? Okay. Any more doubts? No? Okay. What else we have? What is doubts? Just wait some time, it will be back. Okay. So type of addresses you can see here. IP address, that is the logical type of address and IPv4 is 32 bit and uses dotted decimal. Dotted decimal in the sense, uses dot for separation and decimal number system. So dotted decimal notation. Then IPv6, it is 128 bit and uses hexadecimal format. Okay. And for separation uses colon. Then your MAC address, it is a physical type of addresses of 48 bits and uses hexadecimal format. Okay. And you can define your MAC addresses like this. This is clear. This is what we have seen so far. Okay. Then next, this is some introduction about the IPv4 addresses. Okay. So IPv4 address is a unique address that identifies a device on the internet or a local name. Again, an address is always going to be used to identify a device or a node. Okay. Your IP stands for internet protocol. Okay. This is the protocol running through or making the entire internet possible, taking data from one network to another network. Okay. An IP address is a string or of numbers separated by a dot. We use dot or your IPv4 octets, they are separated by a dot. And it is 32 bit in size, your IPv4. Then it has four octets, correct? In your IPv4, there are four octets and each octet is eight bits. Now, if you calculate the value of eight bits, that how much numbers I can adjust if I have eight bits in binary. So eight bits in the sense I can on the minimum, I can write all these as zero. All eight bits can be zero, correct? So if you convert it in decimal, the value is going to be zero. And the maximum value can be all ones because in binary, minimum is zero, maximum is one. Only two digits are there. So this value becomes 255. Okay, I'll tell you how to calculate binary to decimal and decimal to binary. So each number in the set can range from zero to 255. So similarly, if one octet can go from 0 to 255, all four octets can go from all zeros to all 255. Okay. But you must remember for one octet, for each and every octet, the maximum value is 255. It will never be 256. Okay. Then total number of IPv4 addresses, it is 2 raised to power 32. And 2 raised to power 32 is somewhere around 4.3 billion. Okay. And this is the decimal format of the IPv4 address. And this is the binary format. And now we'll see how to convert from decimal to binary and binary to decimal. Is it clear? <coughs> okay. Now we'll see the conversion. So the first conversion we are going to do is decimal to binary. Why we need the decimal to binary conversion? 
because we humans understand the decimal number system. Okay. If I say, if I write something in binary, let's say I write 101, it is a binary number. So can you tell what is the value in the decimal? Do you understand? No, right? Pi. For some people who have already studied, they will know. Okay. But most of the people not know. And this is a small number. That's why we remember. Otherwise, we won't remember all this because we understand five is more easy than one zero one. Okay. So your system, all your systems and your network communication that is happening in the binary only your computers understand binary only. Okay. So computers understand binary and we understand decimal. So we must know the conversion that if we want to give a particular instruction to the computer, then how we are going to write it in decimal or binary. Okay. So see here. For decimal to binary conversion, what you can do? Let's say I want to convert a number 192 in binary. Okay. So all I have to do is keep dividing by 2. If I divide it by 2, what will be the value? 96. So is there any remainder? No. So I will write 0. There's no remainder. Again divide 48. Is there any remainder? No. Again 0. Again divide with 2. 24, no remainder. Again, divide with 2. 12, no remainder. Again, divide with 2. 6, again, no remainder. Divide with 2. 3, there is no remainder. What about now? One. There is one remainder. And again, divide with 2. So it will go 0 times and the remainder will be 1. Now we have reached until the end. Okay. So this side, the remainders, if you write from bottom to up, if you write the remainders from bottom to up, this will be the binary value means this is one one zero 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 so for 192 the binary value will be this okay let's take one more example let's say we want to calculate 240 divide with 2 120 no remainder again divide with 2 60 no remainder again divide with 2 30 no remainder again divide with 2 15 no remainder divide with 2 7, there is a remainder, divide with 2, again a remainder, divide with 2, again we have a remainder and divide with 2, we have a remainder. So the binary value of your 240 is going to be 11110000. Is it clear? Easy. So we can convert from decimal to binary. No problem. Clear to everyone, right? Okay. Online people, any doubts in this? All you have to do is just write the remainders in the bottom to up. Done. Okay. Note it down. Then we'll move forward. Ajay, the yes. last one you said like uh, after reminding of three, you just okay. one second you divided by two. How could yeah. it be possible? See, Where? it is already one, two, yes. one. So I have divided, I have multiplied two by zeros, right? Two zeros are zero. So remainder will be one. Two zeros and zero. If you multiply two with the zeros. Okay. So. It will be zero, right? So mm -hmm. means entire one is the remainder. Okay. Okay. Clear. Okay. Then we'll move forward. So now let's do one more example. Two to four. Convert two to four in binary. Almost everyone is done. Okay. See here. So we want to divide. I mean, convert two to four in binary. So again, divide with two. So it will be. What will be the value? One one two. Remainder is zero. Now. 56, remainder is 0, 2, this will be 28, 0, 14, 0, 7, 0, 3, remainder is 1, 2, remainder is 1, 0, remainder is 1. If you write from bottom to up, it will be 1, 1, 1, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0. Everyone has the same answer? Yes. See, basically, we can stop here on the right after less than one. Yeah, you, two, that you can do. Yeah. You can do that. We can skip one step. Yeah, you can. Skip. We'll be having a shortcut method yeah. also. So this is clear to everyone. Okay. And next we have is the binary to decimal conversion. Binary to decimal conversion. Now again, let's say you have a binary number one zero one zero one zero one zero. Okay. And you want to convert it in decimal. So how you are going to convert it? See, whatever binary number is given to you, just write the binary number. We have written the binary number. Now from left to right, 
write the place values and start from zero okay so the place value this is the zero then one two three four five six seven written place values we have written now anywhere you see the one in the binary number let's say there is one here and what is the place value seven so just write seven in the power of two two raised to power seven now next where is the one five this is five so means i have to do two raised to power five then three so two raised to power three and then we have one so two raised to power one and you just need to add these numbers okay so if you calculate these values two raised to power one is two two raised to power three is eight two raised to power five is 32 and 2 raised to power 7 is 128 okay and if you add these numbers it is going to be 170 it's going to be 170 clear so in decimal this number is 170 okay let's take one more example 11001100 this is the binary we need to calculate the decimal okay so how you are going to calculate we just need to write the number so one one zero zero one one zero zero write the place values from left uh, right to left zero one two three four five six and seven then anywhere we see the two write that particular place value in the power of two so it will be two raised to power seven plus two raised to power six then two raised to power three and two raised to power two if you calculate the value this is 128 64 8 and 2 and if you add these numbers this value will be 202 20 yeah no 202 24. what is the value 204 okay yes yes no no 204 it is 128 plus 64 192 202 already okay okay sorry 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 yes yes my mistake this is 2 raised to power 2 so this will be 4 and the number will be 204 okay it's 202 no 2 raised to power 2 we have here okay okay so 2 raised to power 2 is 4 so it will be 12 and 192 plus 12 is 204 is it clear we can convert decimal to binary and binary to decimal now we'll see a shortcut method for this okay you can use any method of your choice <laughs> first of all we'll be seeing about decimal to binary okay in this shortcut method all you need to do is to remember only one number and that number is one okay how many bits are there in the octet of ipv4 one octet of ip for eight bits so just keep doubling it okay eight times like double of one is what is the double of one two what is the double of two what is the double of eight 16 32 64 and 128 so if you count one two three four five six seven and eight so eight bits means we have calculated eight values we remember one and then keep on doubling until 128 okay now let's say we have a number again 192 <coughs> we want to calculate the binary so we have already calculated by our previous method correct now all you have to do is just to compare this number with this value and you have to go from for comparing you have to go from left to right for comparison you have to go from left to right so see if i compare 192 with 128 is 128 smaller if this number is smaller or equal if this number is smaller or equal just write one below it okay and if it is bigger just write zero so 128 is smaller than 192 so i have written one and now next step is just subtract this value what will be the value it will give me 64 now i need to compare 64 with the next value if i compare 64 with 64 equal means i'm going to write one correct and then again subtract zero no more value left means all other values will be zeros and this is your binary value one one zero 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 if you see this is the binary value here okay let's take the example of 240 so in case of 240 if you compare okay now we need to compare 240 
So if I compare 240 with 128, it is smaller. So I'm going to write one. So subtract it. What will be the value? 112. Yes or no? Now compare 112 with 64. Smaller. So we can write one. Subtract 64. Okay. This will be 48. Compare 48 with the next value, 32. Smaller. Again one. Subtract 32. The value will be 16. Compare 16 with 16. Equal. Write one. And then the remaining will be zero means all other values will be zero. And this will be your binary. So these are the methods you can calculate like this also. You can use any method. That choice is up to you. Okay, either you can use the divide by two method or you can use this method. That is your choice. Any way or any method you feel comfortable in, you can use that. Is this clear? Anyone having any doubt in this? Yes? In one from Okay, repeat. Okay, see here. Let me take one more example. Let me take a random number like, uh, let's say 141. I want to convert in binary. So if I compare 141 with 128, okay, 128 is smaller. So I'm going to write one and then I'm going to subtract 141, I mean 128 from 141. So what will be the value? 13. This is the 13. Now compare 13 with 64. 64 is larger. And when the number is larger, we are going to write zero. Then again, compare with 32, still larger. Compare with 16, still larger. Compare with eight, smaller. So you can take this number. Then subtract. Now we have five. So compare five with four, larger. One. one. Then subtract four, value is one. So compare one with two. So two is larger, write zero. Now compare with one. So one is equal and the number is complete. So this is your binary for 141. Clear? Clear to everyone? All Ajay, I... you said like uh, once if it is zero, last uh, the two, the rest of all will be a zero, right? No, once no, no. If back. this value comes zero, when we are subtracting, if okay. this value comes zero, then zero, the remaining the will be zero. Value. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Let's take one more example. 243. Okay. If you calculate this 243 here, compare with 128. Okay. Let me just. So 128 is smaller. Subtract. So what will be the value? 115, I guess. 115. So if you compare 115, 64 is still smaller. Write one and subtract 64. Okay. Then what will be the value? 51. Correct. Compare with 32. Smaller. Subtract 32. What will be the value? 19. So compare with 16. 16 is smaller. And subtract the 16. What will be the value? 3. Now compare 3 with 8. Larger. So 0. Compare 3 with 4. 0. Compare 3 with 2. Smaller. So write 1. And subtract. And remaining will be 1. So 1 is equal to 1. So this will be the binary. Is it clear? Online people, clear to everyone? Yes. Okay. Now with the same method, we are going to see binary to decimal also. Okay. Again, we just need to remember only one number and that particular number is one. Okay. One, two, four, eight, 16, 32, 64, and 128. Now let's say you have been given the binary one, zero, one, zero, one, zero, one, zero. This is the binary value given to you and you have to calculate what decimal. Now write this binary number from right to left. Okay. From right to left, like first value is zero. One, zero, one, zero, one, zero, one. This is the important step because if you start from left to right, this is going to completely change the number in some cases. Okay. So always write it from right to left. Once you have written anywhere you see one, that particular value, just add it. Like one is there in for 128, 32, 8, 2. This is 170. Okay. Again, one, one, zero, zero. 1100. Zero, zero. Same thing if you write from right to left. Okay. So this will be 0, 0, 1, 1, 0, 0, 1, and 1. And anywhere you see 1, add that particular value. So 128 plus 64 plus 8 plus 4. Okay. And this is going to provide you the number 204. This is how you can calculate binary to decimal.
Now, in which case the number can possibly change? Let's say I give you a value 1010 10 only. In binary, I gave you a number 1010 10 only. So if you write this number, I have given you this number. If you write it left to right instead of right to left, what will happen? Your number will be 1010 10 like this. And maybe remaining you will do all zeros. So this will completely change the number. This is completely going to change the number. So always make sure that you write it from right to left. It means 0, 1, 0, 1. And if there are numbers remaining, you can write zeros. Okay. And now if you add 8 plus 2, this is 10. So this is the binary to decimal and decimal to binary conversion. Is it clear to everyone? Online people, is it clear? Yes. Okay. Yes. So decimal to binary conversion, we have seen. Binary to decimal conversion, we have seen. Then we have IPv4 classes. Next we have is IPv4 classes. Okay. So your IPv4 address has been divided into some classes. So one is the class A, class B, class C, class D, and class E. These are the five classes your IPv4 addresses have been divided. So we know that each and every octet value, if we, I speak about range of your IPv4. So each and every octet minimum value can be zero, maximum value can be 255. Okay, means each and every octet value, I will write with zeros. This is the smallest IPv4 address possible. This is the first IPv4 address. And what could be the last? When I make each and every address maximum, each and every octet maximum. This is the total range. Means the range starts like this. Let's say first address is zero, then first address would be zero, 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 zero. Second address would be zero, 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 one, then zero, 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 two. And when somewhere it will reach two, five, five, then what will happen? Your next octet is going to start changing. Means zero, zero, one, zero. 0, 0, 1, 1, 0, 0, 1 dot 2, like this. So until or unless it gets 255.255. Okay. After that, your third octet is going to change. Okay. So somewhere it will be like 0, 1, 0, 0. And all the things are going to repeat only like 1 dot 255.255. Then it will start with 2. And there will be a time when 255.255. .255. 255. And after that, it is going to start with 1.0.0.0. This is how this range is having around 4.3 billion addresses. Okay. So understood how the addresses are being written. First of all, all this is the first octet. This is the second. This is the third. And this is the fourth octet. Okay. So once the fourth octet completes, then only the third octet will change. Otherwise, otherwise it will not change. Okay. Like you see, first of all, the third octet was same and the first oct uh, fourth octet was changing. Once it is coming to maximum, your third octet is going to change the value. Starting again from 0, 1, 2 and 255, then again 2 dot, 3 dot, 4 dot until 255 dot, 255. Okay, this way the addresses will keep on increasing and total number of addresses is 4.3 billion. Now to assign these addresses, IP4 was divided into classes to each and every class some range of addresses were provided. Some range of addresses were provided or divided in each and every class. Okay. So in case of class A, in case of class A, the range was divided from 0 .0 .0 .0 0.0.0.0 till 127.255.255.255. This range was given to class A. Means if there is any IP address belonging to this range, that will be considered for class A. Okay. Then we have the second class, class B, starts from 128.0.0.0 and goes until 191.255.255.255. Okay. For class C, it is 192.0.0.0 till 223.255.255.255. For class D, it is 224.0.0.0 until 239.255.255.255. And for class E, 
240.0.0.0 till 255.255.255.255. Okay, like this, the address range was divided into each and every class. And looking at the range, looking at the IP address, let's say if I write one IP address, if I say 192.168.0.100, so this IP address belongs to which range? Mm -hmm. Class C, like this we can know. If I say 10.0.0.1, this is class C. What about this address? Yes. Class A. Okay. And if I say 172.16.0.1. B. So means looking at the IP address, you can decide, okay, which class to which class the IP address belongs. Okay. And mainly if we see, if we are, we are just looking at the first octet value. We are just looking at the first octet, first octet value. Correct. Looking at the first octet, we can decide whether which class the IP address belongs to. Okay. Means if you want to decide the class of an IP address, you just need to check the first octet value. Whatever value is there in the first octet with the value, you can decide, okay, which class the IP address belongs to. And when we are looking for the first octet only, then we can make the calculation more short. Like in class A, in case of class A, you can say if the first octet value range between 0 to 127, it is what? Class A. For class B, the first octet value should be 128 to 191. For class C, 192 to 223. For class D, 224 to 239. And for class E, 240 to 25. Now this makes the calculation more easy. Okay. Now these classes these range it was not randomly decided okay it, this classes range it was not randomly decided that okay we will give this value to a class a then the, this range to class b no it wasn't decided randomly okay it was done with the binary calculation it was done with the binary calculation and how it was calculated again we are just looking at the first octet correct and in first octet how many bits are there eight bits are there okay now we'll see Noted already? Yes. Okay. Now check. In first octet, how many bits? Eight yes. bits. So I'm going to write eight places. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, and eight. These are the eight bits of my first octet. Now they were designing class A. So for class A, again, minimum value of each and every octet because we are writing binary. So minimum value of each and every octet could be zero. zero. And maximum value of each and every octet can be two double three. Octet can be two double five, but in binary bit can be either zero or one. Zero. Correct. So they just reserved this first bit. They fixed this bit that this bit will not change. Okay. And they said this first bit will always be zero in case of class A. And if this is bit is zero, always zero, then what will be the minimum value? So minimum means all bits can be zero. If I calculate the minimum value, all bits can be zero. So if you convert this number in decimal, everything is zero means zero okay then for maximum each and every bit, bit can be one but this one bit is fixed we cannot change this bit means remaining bits we can do the maximum if you convert this number into decimal okay if you convert this number into decimal so you are going to use this one two four eight sixteen thirty two 64 120 now if you look at this particular method so if you see here is one behind two what is the sum of the numbers one only what about behind four three what about behind eight seven behind 16 so do you notice a pattern that it is always less one minus one because if it is four the sum is three if it is eight the sum is seven if it is 16 the sum is 15 if it is 32, the sum will be 31. Similarly, if this is zero and remaining are one, this is 128. So 127. Clear? If you see the pattern, it is easy. So this is why the range of your class A, the first octet range of your class A is from zero to 127. This wasn't decided randomly. It was with this reservation. Clear? Okay. Then again, for class B, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, and eight. This time in case of class B, they reserve two bits. Okay. 
the first and the second bit. And these bits, the first bit was always one, and the second bit was always zero. Okay. And the remaining bits, minimum value can be one, all zeros. If you see only one is there, 128. If you convert it into decimal, it will be 128. And if you calculate the maximum value, all ones. So if you see this number is 128, this is 64, 32. Okay. So after, if you see after 64, all are ones, correct? Means what will be the sum of these numbers? 63 and there is one, 128. So if you add the, all these numbers, this will be 191. This is how the range is for class B. Then for class C, again, eight bits. Okay. And in case of class C, three bits we were reserved. The first bit, always one. Second bit, always one. Third bit. Okay. Please come. Yeah. In five minutes for the introduction session, they will give you the introduction about the institute and all. Okay. So this will be one, one, zero. Again, if you calculate the minimum and the maximum values, it will be zero. So 128 plus 64, this will be 192 and maximum value can be one. So this is 128, 64, 32. Behind 32, all are ones, means 31 will be the sum. So these two are 192 so, and 192 plus 31 is going to be 223. Okay. Similarly, in case of class D, the reservation were four bits. Okay. Class D. So in case of class D, four bits were reserved. This was one, 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 and zero. Minimum value, all zeros, maximum value, all ones. If you calculate this value in decimal, it is going to be two, two, four, and this will be two, three, nine. Okay. And then for class E, again, four bits were reserved only. Okay. Only four bits were reserved and all four bits were one minimum all zeros maximum all ones so if you calculate the minimum it is going to be 240 and the maximum is going to be 255 this is how the class range was divided so this is clear to everyone ajay can you please class e calculate ones yes we can calculate there are four ones and four zeros for the minimum and all eight ones for the maximum okay when all eight bits are one this value is maximum means 255 and this value 128 plus 64 plus 32 plus 16 so this is 240 okay yes okay so this is clear classes range now for ip address assignment purpose we only use your three classes class a class b and class c for assignment purpose we just use three classes class a b and c okay in case of class A, the range is from 0 to 127. Okay. But, okay, we'll discuss in the presentation. So, this is clear. Now, see. Uh, uh, why don't we use the D and E? Huh? Why don't we use the class D and class E? Class D and class E. Your class yeah. D, it is reserved for multicast. One to many communication. Okay. And class E, it is reserved for scientific purpose and future use. Okay, it is not used. Like your the last address, two five five two five five two five five dot two five five. It is the universal broadcast address. Okay, so these two classes you cannot assign. And if you try to assign IPs from these classes in your systems, your system will not accept. Your system will accept the IP address in the range of one to two to three only. Okay, the first octet value should be from one to two to three only. Then only your system will accept the IP. Otherwise, it will not accept. Okay. Oh, thank you. Thank you. All right. So if I show you also practically. Okay. If I try to assign here, let's say, first of all, I try to assign two to four because it is the belonging to class D and my system is giving an error. Two to four is not a valid entry. Please specify a value between one and two to three only. Okay. So you can use only three classes class a b and c so this we have discussed the five classes and their range now there's one more thing the 0 dot 0 dot 0 dot 0 it is not used anywhere because right now if i try to assign in system also it says assign only between 1 to 2 to 3 so you cannot use the 0 okay and then 
there's one more special kind of address that is the loopback address okay this 127.0.0.0 this network is used for loopback loopbacks we'll be discussing when we are studying about the routing okay when i'm just uh, telling you about the routing part there we'll be discussing about loopbacks and there only i'll discuss about the loopback addresses okay then class a b and c are used for assignment purpose we saw only the supported range is between 1 to 2 to 3 and 1 to 2 to 3 is between class a b and c only class d it is used for multicast <laughs> for multicast communication and class e it is used for research purpose okay so these two classes also we cannot use is it clear multicast also i'll show you when we are doing the routing because the routing protocols they communicate themselves with the help of this multicast okay so these things you'll be seeing when we are discussing about the routing then next this is the first octet range so for class a it is 1 to 126 why 1 to 1 why not 0 to 127 0 we cannot use and 127 is reserved for loopback so it is 1 to 126 then we have class b 128 to 191 and these are the reservation first bit is always zero first two bits are fixed one and zero first three bits one one zero first four bits one 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 zero and first four bits one 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 okay and this is the first octet range 128 to 191 192 to 223 224 to 239 and 240 to 255 okay is this clear so these things we have discussed and from tomorrow we'll be starting with the submitting okay so if you guys are having any doubt in whatever we have discussed today you can ask your doubts anyone online people no sir okay guys okay then i'll stop the recording